that we're going to discuss is the uh, the apostle and the pro prophet movement um, and it relates to the church right now. Um, a lot of people call it the modern um, apostle and prophet movement um, that's going on in the church. Now we see that there are there is an explosion of um, people using the terms uh, apostle and prophet. Um, the relevancy of uh, the apostle and prophet um, in in the modern church, meaning um, as it relates to us in now in, in 2018. Um, I mean, everywhere we go now, right, we see everybody, it seems like there uh, has been an explosion of uh, the apostle and the prophet. Uh, matter of fact, you know, some say that you know that those are the re relevant offices in the church now. The office of the apostle, the office of the prophet. I'm sure it's happening in any of y'all cities, just like it is in ours. The explosion of them, uh, of the apostle and prophetic movements and how it affected the church. Um, right now. So we're going to have some opening statements uh, on how you feel about it. If you've done research, what your research uncovered, and we'll let everybody that uh, wants to get a chance to speak on the subject. Now, we're going to ask that you stay in line with the subject uh, that, we're, that we're discussing because probably, you know, they're going to take up a lot of, a lot of space. Uh, so we want, to, we want to stay on topic or what we talk about. Our first uh, topic is going to be the apostle and the prophet uh, in the modern church. So, floor is open. Anybody have anything that they want to say about those two offices, um, supposedly offices that are, that are in the church? Their relevancy, uh, any of that good stuff. That's why I went to Ephesians first because that's where it is. That's where um, a lot of it comes from. So, um, let me just say this to start us off. Um, it has been said. I've heard it said. I've read it in books, and I, I've heard it coming from. Uh, I gave uh, Jones gave me a book. I gave the book to Doc Wilson that we was reading. And that's pretty much the book that most of the people who are using uh, um, the, the modern uh, apostle prophetic movement kind of get that information from. And so we, we all glanced at it beforehand. And a lot of people think that now and nowadays, and it's, I know it seems like, well, man, that might not be, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it has a lot to do with stuff, especially if, the, you know, if, if there is a belief out there that those are the only two relevant um, offices in the church in this day and time, that's what we hear a lot. Well, these are these are the only two relevant offices in the church right now is the office of the apostle and and and, and the prophet. So, I want to open the floor up to get your uh, what you feel about uh, and what you researched about uh, that topic. Bishop, from, from <clears throat> what I understand from what we... Go, go, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. But what I understand from what we learned in class is that the word prophet, and, um, not just the word prophet, but the, the word apostle is being uh, misused. And uh, people, uh, people today uh, take apostle as someone that's, uh, that's in authority. Um, we, they take on titles to be, um, uh, it's a pride thing, that they take on titles to assume that uh, their position is above everybody else. When uh, we know the greater 
uh, meaning of the prophecy. I mean, uh, not a prophecy, but of the apostle is was the apostles of uh, Jesus Christ, um, where they had power, um, which is our test for the apostles, that they could uh, heal all men of sickness and all men of diseases and cast out demons. And that they was with Christ. Um, they actually witnessed him in the beginning. But uh, that word, that uh, title uh, um, is being abused. It's not being used as the general sense, as one that's sent by somebody in authority over them, but they are actually apostles of, of Jesus and authority is the way uh, most people uh, that don't know when they hear apostle, that's what they think. And uh, that's the way most apostles carry themselves. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown, thank you for that. Uh, this don't you had your hands up? Yes, sir. Um, Brother Church, history is that uh, throughout the Jews of College 12, we know through the process as though as a model in the very last one was John on the island of Patmos. But at the same time, uh, Lucas and uh, uh, they were as they were training those, they trained those as bishops within the time period. Then after the last apostle got killed, and John, that was the last era of the apostles. So what can what come in next with the bishops? That's what we're standing today. With the bishop at anybody, anybody else? And I'm gonna read this because um, this is this verse that I'm about to read will be the first verse that they go to before they go to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 this verse gives them their premise but if you are a Bible student you know it don't, and I'm going to show you why. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Our bishop stated, and it is a, it's a true fact statement that, that we are living in an era, they say, uh, of the apostle and prophet. And this is where they get it from. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 says and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone they build their premise on this verse to separate from all others the reason why they cannot use this verse is because this verse is talking about the 12 mm -hmm. and the Apostle Paul. This is not talking about the, the, the Apostles or the gift of of apostleship in verse 11. Mm -hmm. But verse 2 and 20, this is where they use to separate from the bishop, from the evangelist, from everyone else, to be superior or supreme over everyone else. But if you study this, this is not even talking about a modern day Apostle. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the foundation. Right. Those that we read or are reading about today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is really uh, uh, what we call uh, the, uh, and you're gonna and you hear it, the apostolic movement. But in actuality, it's not the apostolic movement because. Uh, we've been in the apostolic movement from the book of Acts. Right. It ain't just God. It means the 
teachings of the apostles. All of us should, should be following the, the teachings <laughs> of the apostles. And that's, and that's our New Testament. Um, we have to, and let me say this, we are here for, for learning um, because there's a lot going on. And we see a lot of men and women taking on this title of apostle, but really don't have a really biblical understanding or historical understanding of what a true apostle is. The term apostle means, or is defined as uh, an ambassador, one who sent. Me and Bishop was talking when we was going to, to Georgia. I said, shoot, I'm an apostle then because you just sent me to Calvary. Yes, sir. The star of work. Mm -hmm. And then what we see in, in Acts chapter 13, you see in Acts chapter 13, where they are missionaries. They are going all around preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says the Holy Ghost uh, got the prophets to separate them, Paul and Barnabas, and call them apostles first. That, that's where you, you, you see it at. But they were separated. A lot of men and women today, they're not doing the work. But they're taking on the title. Mm -hmm. And in certain circles, and I'm gonna stop in certain, in certain circles, um, <laughs> if you have that title of apostle, uh, and he has the title pastor, they're gonna pay the apostle more money than they pay him. Because it's they assume it is the head. But the, the, the same thing, the same, uh, uh, because the Bible says it is not the apostle or the, the pastor. It is the Holy Ghost that's working in. And I will deal with the history later, but this is the verse that they go to to separate them from everybody else. Amen. 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 And uh, just a little more on that per, uh, verse that doctors read upon the foundation of the apostles in Jesus Christ, uh, using just the Bible itself, uh, yes. a revelation explains what that verse is. It says that the, 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 the names of the 12 yes. are written on the foundation of the city yes. and that Jesus is the chief cornerstone of that city. Yes. So just using just a little bit of a biblical uh, understanding yes. and you, you can see clearly like Doc said that that verse is referring to the 12 mm -hmm. um, because elsewhere in the Bible it refers to them as be, their names being written on the foundation of the city uh, so you know, just using a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know Bible sense and we can you know deduce where, what that verse is, is really talking about. But I, I have the definition of the, the word apostolos pulled up um, from um, Thayer's a Greek lexicon and strong number 652. The reason why I use the Thayer's because Thayer's is a little more thorough than even uh, the Strong's Dictionary. Um, and it gives us three main definitions for the word apostolos. And I'm going to read those to you, uh, what those three definitions are. Uh, you can see very plain, I'm, I'm reading the definitions are right here, just right down here. And it says, hey, number one, uh, G652, uh, Strong's number, a delegate messenger, one sent with orders. Um, <laughs> a delegate messenger one sent with orders with orders so that is uh, that is that is one definition right mm -hmm. um, so if I send Sam with orders or if I send Sam as a messenger or an ambassador or as a delegate somewhere then, and then he's an apostle because I sent him somewhere 
Uh, you understand what I'm saying? So the word can be applied that way and it not be incorrect, can be correct. All right. But now the second definition of the word, uh, this word is used 81 times. If I'm not uh, mistaken, the word is used 81 times total. All right. The second definition, now there's a thing called the weight of scripture that has been totally just thrown away. Right. Weight meaning that the overall uses of the word is going to be the way it's used the most times. And then the general sense of the word or the second applications is going to be the way it's used the lesser times. So the way the word is used the most in the Bible is, is, is under definition number two. What it says specifically and especially applied to the 12 disciples whom Christ selected out of his multitude of adherents to be his companions and heralds to complain, to proclaim to men the kingdom of God. OK. This is the way that it's used. The most times in scripture of the 81 times it's used this way, I think 78 times it's used referring to the 12 apostles having special gifts of the Holy Spirit bestowed upon them. This is the way it's used, referring to the 12 apostles that he called out. The Bible says he called his disciples to him. And of his disciples, of his disciples, he chose 12. And of the 12, he gave certain gifts. And so it is referenced that way the most times. Okay? That's so the weight of the scripture would say that the word is to be applied and used this way. Because it's used that way most times. All right. Definition number three. In a broader sense, those that are sent like Barnabas and Silvius, apostles is to be taken in a broader sense. In other words, just one cent. OK, in a, in a broader sense of the way the word is used. So we got three definitions for this one word, mm -hmm. three ways the word is applied. Of the uh, of the 81 times, 78 times is used referring to apostles of Jesus Christ, them having all authority, them having all gifts, them having uh, uh, those special gifts that he gave them to heal all manner of disease, all manner of sickness, all that good stuff. OK. So just with the de uh, declination of the word, the way the word is broken down, we have three definitions that can, three ways this word can be applied. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, one cent, and specifically as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So now that we have the definition, we can get rid of the question, is there modern day apostles? Yes, because we can use the word in three different ways. If, 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 if I send Brother Brandon uh, with holy orders to go and do something somewhere, then I can correctly say that Brandon is an apostle because he's been sent with certain orders and he's a messenger or an ambassador of mine or somebody out of churches so he can be an apostle but as brother brown said i think it is so misconstrued and taken all the way out of context the way that it's being applied today because as in the meeting that we were in the way the word is used and applied today they're using it in the specific sense that it was related only to the apostles. Right. That's the way they're using right. it, meaning that they have all authority, all the power uh, uh, in, in Christ Jesus. Now, my thing is, I have no problem with the with the 
first definition and the third definition, if you want to call yourself an apostle in the church, I have no problem with that because the word is used that way. But now if you are claiming that you are an apostle of Jesus Christ in the same manner that the apostles was, then I got a problem with you. I have a right then to test your apostleship. I have a right to test it. If you look in the ancient documents, the Didache, if you look in uh, Revelation, the second chapter where it says they tested their apostleships and found them to be liars, Paul's apostleship was called into question at one point. And he, I think is in 2 Corinthians 12 and 20, said he told them very plainly that the signs of my apostleship were worked among you in signs, wonders, with power. In other words, I, you are the proof of my apostleship, but I work the signs and wonders of the apostleship among you to seal my apostleship to you. Um, so when his apostleship was questioned or tested, he passed his test. So that's just my, my, little, my little contribution. I wanted to show you what the word literally means. That is three definitions to that word. Some say four, but I haven't found the fourth one yet. Uh, most, most of the uh, real Greek uh, 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 theologians that, that, that really know Greek, I mean, got at least seven years or more and actually studying the Greek language says there's three ways it's used. You know, um, that is three definitions. Just like if I said there are three definitions to the word stick. A stick can mean a, a, a branch. Stick can mean something comes together. And stick can mean to prick somebody. Right? Mm -hmm. There's three definitions to that word. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be like me saying, me taking uh, uh, the word that means... Uh, uh, to prick somebody and saying that it means a tree branch. Even though I'm using the word, I'm using it incorrectly. You, you understand what I'm saying? So the word apostle has three definitions. So yes, we can have modern day apostles. Yes. But which type though, is, is I think is the broader question. Which type are you? If you now if you're telling me that you are an apostle of Jesus Christ, then there are some other qualifications. I mean, we don't have to guess. One of the apostles betrayed Jesus and they had to replace him. I'm talking about one of the 12 now. Right. The number went down from 12 to 11 right. in the book of Acts. Yeah. And there were some qualifications there that was given to replace and get the number of apostles back up to 12. Right. Those apostles, right? So, I mean, the qualifications are there and they're given. Matter of fact, Paul explained to them how he met him. He said, have I not seen the Lord? You know, so um, we don't have to guess. And see, that's why I think a lot of the confusion is coming in. Uh, and that's, even on both sides, where some people say, well, no, there's no modern day apostles there. You got whole denominations that say that. But then I think, OK, in the same sense, you don't really understand how the word can, was used in the text. Right. So that's my contribution. Anybody else? I just say, me, me and Bishop talked about it briefly a little bit, but most of the people that I deal with, they don't have that understanding. They just, yeah. <laughs> they just taking on the title because it's greater than, than Bishop, I guess you want to say. Um, yeah, they think it is. And, um, and man, I just, <laughs> why? I mean, why? I mean, I just, it's just, oh man, like, being an apostle and doing those things and having to understand why. I just, I mean, that's right. my question, why? Um, I asked the brother that I was sitting with last week after we talked about it, I was mm -hmm. like, where you get it from? What, why? why you, how you became an apostle? He couldn't even tell me how he became an apostle. Where it come from? I mean, you got the title, where, where it come from? How you got that? Somebody ordained you to be there? I mean, I'm asking these questions. He was like, no, nah, the Lord told me. That's, that's the only answer he got, the Lord told me. The Lord told me. <laughs> so did you ask him what type of an apostle? 
or is he? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's what I usually, you know, uh-huh. if, 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 if they want to get into a discussion about me, I mean, I have no qualms about calling somebody an apostle because I understand the word. Right. Uh, so I have no qualms about it. It's only when you, you, you say you're an apostle like the 12 was yes. that my eyebrows go up and I want to see, okay, now, if you saying that, you claiming that, because if you if you're one of the, if you're an apostle like the twelve, then I have no problem with submitting to you at all, because that means that you've been you've seen the Lord, you you've been specially selected by Jesus, you've been um, uh, specially commissioned by Him, then ratified by the church. I have no problem with that. But uh, all the apostles had certain things that they were able to do. Uh, uh, every single time and like I say you know uh, I'm going to test it if you say that you have the reason why I confronted this guy when we was at the meeting because of what he was proclaiming you know now if, if he would have never proclaimed some of the things even that we was trying to proclaim to the people I wouldn't have said anything because I understand the word you said uh, what me uh, this is the, a while back uh, Jones and I was at a uh, service uh, <laughs> But in, anybody else on the uh, uh, just on the on the definition or anything that the doc said? Uh, anybody else got any comments on uh, the apostle before we get into a little bit of church history? And well, anybody uh, else? Uh, ask a question. Uh huh. Apostle, uh, being an apostle, uh, you do. You take yourself out of the cool way, the way, right? How, how, how do you? I'm trying to get it right. Okay, but you take it out. Because I heard a lot of people saying they're impossible. Okay. But I see other signs on there that they're not doing what possible to do. Okay. Mm. So, they're, so they're, they're teaching, but I don't see no work still. Okay, okay. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting clear now what you're trying to say. Uh, uh, they're, they're teaching, but they have no words. The apostles did certain things. They, they, were, they, they were certain things. Now, I, was, But there were other apostles in the text. Right, yeah. Now, we, are we talking about, because I just gave you the definition on the, on the three types. And, and, and what... They, they, they literally do. The word, first one is, a, is an ambassador, a messenger, um, being sent to uh, a certain place with orders, it say, with, 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 with orders. In other words, they have a, a missionary obligation to do some type of work. They've been sent to do some type of work. Uh, um, whether it's that, that might not necessarily be to establish churches, it could be to bring a message. Because that's what, you know, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what the world, now, they order with orders, orders could be different things. If they've been given by somebody, could be to, to establish a church, it could be to do uh, 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 other things. Um, but we see what the apostles did, they were really missionaries. Yes. They, they, they were uh, on missions, and that, that mission entailed establishing a uh, church. Now, we're talking about the 12, see? Right, right. We talking about uh, uh, the apostle of Jesus Christ, but you had other apostles uh, that wasn't part of the twelve, like Barnabas, right. and he was doing basically the same thing, but he wasn't numbered with the twelve. Right. Huh? I was just going to say Paul yeah. Barnabas. Yeah, he, he wasn't numbered. The church, right? Over that argument, right? And the church sitting there, they was apostles, right? They were, and some some others in the text, uh, but they wasn't uh, part of the twelve. Barnabas wouldn't be numbered with the twelve per se. Right. But he still was an apostle that did great works and did great things. Paul wouldn't be number up with 12 people. Really and truly. Truly. Because uh, uh, on the foundation it says it's going to be the 12 apostles. Right. So Paul is not really even included. In, in, because of what he said in Acts. Right. When they chose the foundation, they chose one that was with them from the beginning. Beginning. Right. Right, that's right. That was a qualification. Right. So, this is how, when you ask an apostle, the only thing you got to do to ask him is, 
and this will show you one that they don't understand the definition, mm -hmm. and two they are false apostles. One thing you got to do is ask them one. Oh, one question: Are you over the bishop, or you hear them preach and they say all bishops are out of order because they have yeah. not submitted under the apostles? Yeah, that'll let you know right there. That, that, Right there, do what you do. Close, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> because of this. And I believe this too, Bishop, because we've been around church and a person has a title or our pastor let them in to preach. Mm -hmm. Because we are ignorant. Ignorant means not to know. Because we don't know church history. Right. Or we, we don't, don't know enough mm -hmm. about uh, what you said about the weight of the scripture. Mm -hmm. We will assume something and we're like, okay. But we are in a time of, of great deception. And because we are in a time of great deception, most People know most people in the church don't read the Bible. True. Don't study. True. They don't even sit up under leaders that will cause them to to go and dig and search. That's why we just accept mm -hmm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, because, like I showed you where we come from in Orlando, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Even some of our friends in ministry, we know them jokers because yeah. they don't get them around. Mm -hmm. But because we want a you know superiority, right, right, and we want folk to look up at us, mm -hmm. we assume that the chief place is the apostleship, but it is actually not because this. When you go back and you look at. Acts chapter 13, mm -hmm. you see the Holy Ghost called the prophet and the teacher mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. to cause these men for the work. 14 years later, after right. Jesus called them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So when the apostle says, the, the only thing they got is Jesus called me to no, serve. That's, right. that's not be ratified by the church. See, every leader has to have a leader. That's right. Right. When you sit, if Brandon is a part of Christ by Christ, if I say Brandon, listen, and I in, in the body of Christ sanctified church, we got levels, biblical levels of going up. We just don't give you a title. We look at, according to Acts chapter 13, the work. If you don't have the work, how can you become a deacon or an elder or a minister? You got to have the work. Um, a lot of us don't know about the light of rain movement. Mm -hmm. Right. Where you, where there, there's one line of, of the light of rain movement that's this where all this stuff comes from. from. Way back then. But you got the book that you gave me, I forgot the name of it, but guys like that is saying, listen, we want to take this thing back to the book of Acts. And we want to do this, 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 and that. God calling us to raise up <laughs> these holy men and we're going to go to war and we're going to stand and all this foolishness. But they don't tell you the broad of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Because you see in people ordaining apostles. Mm -hmm. And they are saying the only one that can ordain an apostle is another apostle. <laughs> that's a lie, boy. If you read Acts chapter the 13, two, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's not true. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, get us because of our ignorance. Yes, they do. And we want to know why are we here? What uh, 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 
Why is this so important? Because we, we're here to give biblical truth. Mm -hmm. Because this thing is going to get worse. It is. And then you're going to be seeing people call on you. Well, you know what? You know, God called you. You know, you got an apple stop. Get out of get you. And you got an apple stop anointing on your life. What they're actually saying is, if God called you to be a prophet. Right, right. But you don't even know what a prophet is. Live. Right. But because you trust, you trust in the God in me, you don't say, well, maybe they're right. And then when somebody lay hands on you and say, you got an apostolic anointing, the whole church go, go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then you leave out of there saying, well, I got an apostolic anointing. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. right. You don't know you're setting yourself up for failure. Amen? Mm -hmm. so, so you got to be careful. When, when these people are coming and you looking at them like, boy, they deep, boy, woo, but they just going on their life. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? The only thing that you do is listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love mm -hmm. bro, uh, bro Brandon. Bro Brandon, yeah. bro Brandon to try me. <laughs> <laughs> because we believe we got to test this stuff. And that's why we're here. That's right. To get a biblical understanding of what this is, because it's it's about to get bad. You got all everybody up there possible now. And yeah. then this is what they're gonna say. The first thing I, I wanna know who the chief apostle. Oh Lord. Who the chief apostle? <laughs> who the chief apostle? And watch this. If all of them have the same authority, so it's still out of order. Because yeah. it has to it has, has to be in all. Mm -hmm. Someone has to leave. Yes, sir. Must be. That's, 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 that's Bible. That's it's Bible. a lot of times as men, we don't want another man yes, sir. to Come leave. On. We want yes. to say, well, I, 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 I got this thing. That's not Bible. And that's why you see the church is so out of all because a lot of other men are out of all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when the men get back in all biblically, then you will see the church. But we're living in the last day. You about to see all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why you better learn. You better get it for yourself. Just Amen. 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 You need to give it to you. Uh, Bishop Jones had his hands up and then Minister Brown. Amen. God, you are so true, but that what happened to me. Uh, oh, somebody told you got it. I'm talking about it. <laughs> Come up, come up in the church and say, uh, you know God is moving to another level. I said, sure. <laughs> and he kept on doing that. I said, I don't want to belittle this guy, but uh, he kept on. So when I hit him with the knowledge of it, he couldn't give me no explanation, but give me a book. <laughs> I, I said, that's the big way you kill me. He said, yes, sir. But he read that book, I said, okay. And that's the book that you gave to me. Yes, sir. That's the one I gave you. Foolish. Okay. I told that book in the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um. <laughs> Doc said it. He said it? Yeah. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just you, you know, I, when I just want to piggyback on what Doc said, man, because that's so true when I was talking to the the first thing is no humility. So we talking about it and I'm questioning the guy about his apostleship. Mm -hmm. He get mad. Oh wow. Already you can see his face. Yeah, turn all up. That's why I ain't asking him. Just <laughs> you know, okay. Getting all up, getting all mad like I'm supposed to ask you. Right. But my understanding is and, and I, I didn't know all this a lot of this stuff until I got into a bishop and stopped him in. Even even being starting it as minister of music, I always understood stood the the higher the title, the bigger the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And and even come starting teaching Sunday school, and as I start to rise, it was more responsibility. People start to look at me more, and so it's like you see these apostles, they ain't doing nothing. Ain't no responsibility. You get you just writing them a check. I had one come. I ain't gonna, he came to church. All he wanted was a check. The preaching, and you got like I say, oh, all the time, and all that. I'm looking at him like, can, can can I give you all this 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 the true story? 